I didn't know that there was an issue at the time. And uh, Love's Junkyard's right there on 29. Uh-huh. Your dad and I raced out of that junkyard. That's where you got your parts. That's where we got our parts. Yep. And I, I needed a motor. So I went out there and got a motor out of the junkyard, and it was all greasy. And so I didn't think nothing about it. So I said, well, let's just stop over here at Roberts because he's got a pressure washer, and we'll wash the grease off of it. And um, Who's <clears> with you? You did. Okay. Y'all went in the junkyard and pulled a motor out. Oh, we was in the junkyard every Tuesday. Damn. But anyhow, um, my uncle Jimmy, uh, my uncle Jimmy, Jimmy G, G says that Dad was in that junkyard in the mid- at midnight sometimes. Yeah, yeah, he'd sneak in there. Oh yeah, like <laughs> I said, we that was my uncle's uh, junkyard. Oh shit. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> but but yeah, yeah, we was in the junkyard every Monday or Tuesday. Yeah. Mainly Tuesday because Monday we tore apart. Tuesday go out to the junkyard yeah. and get stuff. But anyhow, we took that uh, block. It was laid on the back. I had an old ramp truck, and it was I had it you know chained down on the back of the ramp truck and all and. Uh, we pulled into Roberts out there, right beside the whale house, right in front of the shop there. Yep. And uh, Dale's sitting in the, the car there, and I get out. I said, Robert, I says, uh, I need to use your pressure washer. And Dale gets out and walks toward the back of the thing. Here comes Robert out with a fan belt about that long. Going to whoop Dale. Why? <laughs> Why? He run him around. To, well, he, he and his mother got into it about something. I don't know exactly what yeah. details was there, and Denver did ask. But anyhow. Dale's running around the, the well house right there. <laughs> and uh, he says, we got to go. We got to go. And he jumped back in the truck, and I jumped in the truck and we left. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't get to wash the motor. No. <laughs> so we don't know why he was so mad at him? Because him and mom was fighting. Yeah, him and his mother was fighting about oh, something. Oh, Dale yeah. Jr.'s mom. I got you. Yeah. I, see, yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, Robert G's got to stick up for his daughter, I guess. <laughs> He's got yeah. a fan belt, I'm yeah. telling you. A it's a long belt. one. He's going to whoop him. Yeah, that's going to oh, oh, yeah. Damn. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's just crazy hearing stories about it, you know, back <laughs> back then when dad wasn't, dad wasn't, had no notoriety, no fame, yeah. not not a whole lot of money, no. and was just trying to survive, yeah. but making so many terrible decisions, <laughs> right? Uh, you know, that, that it's, it's, I mean, good, you know, he made, they were bad f***ing decisions, you know. Yeah. You Some, know, yeah, maybe. Fight with mom and all that, but. At her dad's house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you're going to fight with her, don't go to Robert right. G's yeah. house. Losing, losing his license, driving around right. with license. Yeah. How in the hell he made it? I don't right. know. Right. Your, your dad was fearless. He was. He Nothing. was fearless. I'm telling you right now, there's only one of them, and he was the only one. He wasn't scared of, I mean, anything. And you could not dare him to do nothing. I mean, it. yeah, we, we would leave the racetrack, and he'd grab a handful of lug nuts throw them on the dash, and somebody, you know, passed us or done, run us off a ramp or, you know, there's nothing wrong, pitch a couple of lug nuts in their windshield. Damn. Good oh, yeah. heavens. Oh, yeah. What a wild man. Animal. He was. He was. <laughs> yeah. He was. He'd, he'd always get lug nuts. He'd always have, you know, eight or ten lug nuts. Somebody messed around. Because I guess pulling that car around in yeah. an open trailer, you might get run off the tram, yeah. damn road by some well, competition. Well, I, I know another time that uh, – and Tony, Tony, you will probably tell you this here too. Is uh, he come home and uh, you know the trailer didn't have no fenders on it, and there'd be cars running up and down the road there that had wheel marks on the side of them. No oh, lord. <laughs> <laughs> he put the damn tire. He put the trailer to the damn parked cars yes, on the did. street. Well, I mean they they come off that ramp. And if he didn't like the way it was coming off that ramp, and it was going to be at the same time, the timing was everything. You God know, dang. bam. He's crazy. Oh yeah, and then throw a lug nut over. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, we had uh, we had loudspeakers. He had this. He had the same kind of truck I had, but he had a box truck and pulled an open trailer, and I had the ramp truck. The same model, same trucks. Yeah, just a little different right there. But anyhow, uh, in his truck, he had a loudspeaker sitting over in the right hand corner with the C. Everybody had CBs, mm-hmm. and so he could holler at people and stuff like it right there. You know, going well, through down there. a CB, you'd be hollering at somebody in a car. Exactly. And uh, so once he got to running with me, he said, "Now listen." We got to go get you a C, uh, get you a CB and a, a microphone so I can talk to these people. <laughs> While you driving down the street? While we're driving down the street, and he, and it, every time we go to lunch, we come up here. Your grandma would cook us lunch and stuff. She had mm-hmm. worked at a little place right there in the cafe. The, yeah, yeah, the cafe. Right there, Concord. We'd eat because we didn't have no money, so she'd feed us. Yeah. <laughs> and we are coming off of yesterday's show uh, where we had a great conversation with Tony Fur. Tony Fur probably not a name that a lot of our newer NASCAR fans are aware of. Won a couple races at the cup level. 
uh, was one of the guys that was always kind of had a reputation for cheating or, you know, creative ideas uh, within the NASCAR rule book. And we pushed him a little bit to give us some of those stories. One of the things that I was pretty excited about was to be able to learn some of the things that he knew about my dad. My dad drove race cars for him at Metrolina back when dad was flat broke and things were tough, man. And Mike, we learned some things about dad that I didn't know, which rarely happens, but it does happen. And when it does happen, it's always at this table. Yeah. Like I'm not learning these things out in the, out in the wilderness, but we learned that Dale Earnhardt, uh, run around without a driver's license. Yeah. Uh, probably had a couple of, uh, you know, DUIs, whatever. Um, Tony wasn't sure, but he'd lost his license. And uh, I knew, you know, by listening to Tony Sr. and uh, my Uncle Robert G., that Dad was wide <laughs> open on the highways, you know, um, speeding, breaking laws, doing whatever. So there's no surprise to me, I guess, that he run afoul and got himself in a little bit of trouble and lost his license. But, um, yeah, the fact that he might have been running around for years without one and no care in the world, still driving up and down the road, pretty crazy. Brazen. Very brazen. Tony might have been sarcastic, but he might not have been when yeah. he said that he thinks that Dale Earnhardt's first driver's license might have come at the age of 31. Yeah. And so I was. <laughs> Good heavens. I asked Tony about what disagreements that ta- my dad and my grandfather, Robert G., might have had. My grandfather on my mother's side so you know dad and mom get split up and divorced right around the time that tony is uh has my dad driving his dirt car 77 78 and i had heard stories where my mom had to talk some sense into my father after a race at metrolina where i guess dad was driving someone else's car but got into an argument or a fight at the racetrack with with Robert G, and um, Dad was you know was was really out of his mind, and Mama had to talk him off the ledge there. But and I was trying to see if Tony knew anything about that particular story, but he's telling me a whole different story where Dad you know goes over to Robert G's and Robert G comes out of the building, uh, gonna give him a whooping with a uh, with a bell, fan bell with a fan bell, yeah, which is interesting and and. You know, I, hey, man, they had a divorce. They had fights. They had arguments. They, I know my mom, and I know my dad, and I bet there were some really nasty, nasty arguments. Um, and I'm sure that if mom went over to Robert G's and told him what all went down, he's absolutely going to be furious, right, and, si- and, and, and want to take after and look after his, his daughter. Um, and so for I, the the that dad had to even go over there knowing there could be some potential hurt feelings and frustrations i can't even imagine these the time I, I the times that my dad lived and the way they lived in the 70s uh, right before dad's cup career took off right before that right 76 77 78 he was a pistol he was a handful how about the stories of throwing out the uh the, the lug nuts out of the car right. just, to, just to break windows yeah. of people that pissed him off. Which <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. It don't sound like the same guy. I know. You know? I mean, I did some dumb shit, um, hitting mailboxes with mail, baseball bats, and, and I regret it. Everybody and anybody I ever tore up your mailbox, I feel like a real ass. Um, and, and it's kind of along those lines, I guess. Um, me and some buddies, we bought some eggs, going egg some cars, egg some dry, you know, egg some egg some things i don't know what the hell we're gonna do we're gonna throw, throw eggs yeah we're driving down the road we got the eggs and eggs carton eggs sitting in my buddy's lap in my pickup truck i was probably 16 and we're driving in in oncoming traffic right uh on in the other lane he tossed an egg over the top of the truck and it and it hit the front of this box van and sound like a damn shotgun because it's on my side i didn't know what the hell he threw over i couldn't believe egg made such a loud racket but um, dangerous, yeah. you know, and, and, you know, so I, I, I'm not going to sit here and be a hypocrite and say, what the hell is daddy thinking? He, I, he had done a lot of dumb stuff, but goodness, man. Well, the hypocrite, the hypocrisy would be if he got mad at you for the eggs. That's <laughs> the thing. Like he did, he, he would, he, you know, I stole a traffic cone, right? He, he <laughs> who doesn't steal a traffic cone in their time, right? We were riding around in the back of the mall. Ain't nobody in the parking lot. 
<laughs> hey, man, grab it damn cone. When I drive by it, grab the cone and just kind of swing it into the bed of the truck, and, and here we go. I take the cone home, and Daddy gets all pissed off because I got a cone. Where'd you get the cone? Take it back. <laughs> I'm like, S man, ain't no big deal. There's a hundred of them out there. Um, you know, everybody needs a traffic cone in their bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, you know, I wished he was here. I'd be like, hey, what the hell, dude? Sit down and tell me some of these stories. We don't got to record it for the There's podcast. There's so many, uh, so many. But damn it, hell. dude. Yeah. Like, come on. Clean up. Tell yeah. me about it. T come clean with all this stuff. Yeah. Nitrous and everything. Nitrous. It started. Yeah. And, I, and listen, I didn't ask that to Tony yesterday, but it was Tommy Russell that told us the, nit the yeah. first nitrous uh, story, right? And as I put the timeline together, Tom, he drove for Tommy Russell before he drove for Tony Fur. That's right. So you know that those Tony Fur, Tony Fur's like everybody had to run nitrous. You know he was running nitrous with Tony Fur too. We didn't. I didn't ask him. I, it's in my mind. I'm just assuming that he's saying everybody ran it. Yeah. So and you know, he's talking about all the different ways um, <laughs> you would hide it, hide the bottle. But anyways, you know that that was going on. Yeah. I don't think it was a one time thing with Tommy Russell. But um, how about the story, Dale? Of uh, them getting run out of the race for him planting the uh, the, the wrecking the guy the, uh, for the six Dickie grand. Armstrong or whatever his name was <laughs> yeah wrecking him the rain coming out and then him having to jump off the truck him yeah. onto the I mean like have you ever heard that no that is insane it also is feels a little heroic too I mean like I I thought that that just added in a good way to this whole like legacy and bad. Of Dale Earnhardt. I don't know if you felt the same way. Well, I, I did. All right. So they're broke and they know they need the first or second place money. Mm -hmm. And they are they get passed by granddaddy's car and he he tried to uh, you know, from listening to Tony, Daddy tried to move him, but didn't, you know, didn't have the speed to do it. And uh don't know that he would have planted him into the guardrail, being that it was granddaddy's car and they parked right next to each other. But he wrecks the hell out of the other guy that he don't know. Hell, this guy come from Florida, some hot shoe from, you know. This, you know Trying to take the money. Yeah. He's like, you know, hell, this guy, hell, you know, I'll wreck his And he hooks him and wads him up. Yeah. And because uh, I guess that's, that's how bad he needed that money. Yeah. That's a hell of a thing, man. I've never ran a race, so I can't put myself in that frame of mind because I've never ran a race sitting there going, oh, shit. I can't lose this position because I'm not going to make the money I need to make. You know what I mean? With a hole in your radiator too, like. But I'm just saying, how do you, how do, how I've never, I, unfortunately for me, I don't know that I or a lot of people in this day and age have ever been in the race car thinking I'm going to finish in this position. I don't give a damn what it takes, and and literally wrecking a guy into the fence is what one what of the things I'll take. do. Yeah. yeah, and he does, and he does it. Um, desperate times, man. Just, yeah, I was just thinking, racing to survive sounds God. a lot like what that would be. Anytime else you use it, that so, sounds like an overstatement. Yeah. But I, mean, I think that's exactly what they were doing. So listening to Tony Sr. tell some stories about Dad um, around this time, during this time, right? Dad worked as a um, Dad worked as a welder at Great Dane, um, and would if he needed to go race and the work would not accommodate that he quit because he knew that he could walk in there a month later and get the same job back because hmm. he was he you know he was a hard worker knew how to do this and they needed it they needed the guy um so but he the thing about that is is what i'm trying to bring up in and t listen to my mom tell stories tony spurs confirmed it a little bit here tony senior Dad wanted to race, and he did whatever it took to race. He he would quit work. He would quit. You know, he would quit a job, lose his pay check for however many weeks. Um, we'd eat scraps. You know, we'd eat bologna sandwiches every day, or the rent, or the power, or whatever. The electrical, all that stuff would get pushed back. Um, not paid on time. We'd go without the. Uh, you know. Peter, you know that they, they had these tanks on the on the back of the trailers that you'd have to fill up to ca to to have heat to have to burn the flame and heat the house, and he'd come in there with two dollars worth or five dollars worth, just kind of piecing it together, right?
never filling that 40 gallon tank up or mm. whatever, you know, whatever that 55 gallon tank. And so, you know, he just was like day to day, just like Tony said, you know, they had, I, I, got, I can't get it today. I ain't got the money. All right, we'll try to get it tomorrow. What do I got to do tomorrow? What do I got to do now to get that money to do that? You know, and it was literally going from, you know, buck to buck. And he would quit his job to go race and everything else had to suffer, you know, bills, the family, Christmas, whatever, right? And he he knew what he needed to make to race or to get to the racetrack and buy the tires he needed. And if he couldn't, you know, and he's all, he's running around getting, you know, he's running around to Robert G, Tom Pistone, Russ, Tommy Russell, and anyone else who would give him something for nothing, you know. Hey, man, I've got a hole in my radiator. I ain't buying a brand new damn radiator. Breaking in junkyards. Yeah. Midnight. Right. Probably the same junkyard he was in earlier that day getting the motor out of. Exactly. He's walking around in there going, damn, I need that too. I'm coming here tonight. I'm going to come in here at midnight and get it. And just brazen. So brazen. I can't believe how just brazen he was. Like Tony said, he was he was fearless. Yeah, but I mean, it, there's there seems to be context around that now that really is telling about about your dad. To be for me, at least, we've had a bunch of guests on here that have talked about your dad and was even from that time. But to be honest with you, this is the first time that I was listening to stuff where I'm like, okay, maybe this actually explains a lot yeah, uh, about him. I mean, like, just hear me out on this. If he's if he's literally racing to survive or le- racing to make it to the next race, right? And you're saying to yourself. I must finish here to be able to make it to the next paycheck or to make, to get make through the, the winter or to, yeah, like yeah. get through the winter. Right. I, I had a, a great aunt who grew up in the great depression. She ended up, she died extremely wealthy, extremely wealthy. you never know it. She'd never threw anything away. She grew up in the great depression. And so it, it affected her the rest of her life, 90 years where you would never know because she never would throw anything away because she grew up in, in the most repressible years. Her young years were in the Great Depression, also trying to survive. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying, sometimes if that's when you're growing up, and that's, maybe, that's, maybe he's racing that way the rest of his life just because that's all he knew. That's in his most impressionable years when he's trying to make it. He's like, hell yeah, I'm going to put a dang door to you. Doesn't matter how successful or how many championships he has at that point. Yeah. It's who he is as a racer. Yeah. It's how he grew up. I don't know. It just, to me, Tony Fur gave us a lot of context behind how we ended up with the Intimidator. And that was from, it sounded to me like a guy that was just trying to make it through the winter, like you said. Yeah. That was, that was a hell of a way to say it. Yeah. I was glad he was honest. We had to, we had to, we had to pry it out of him. He wasn't, he, cause he didn't want to talk bad about dad. He didn't want to say, he was like, man, you know, something, I don't want to, I don't want to tell you about the lug nuts, right? You know, but we eventually broke him, got him comfortable, well, and he doesn't have much of a poker face. So like he's like he he would grin yeah. through through everything. What did I you just, think? Oh, go ahead. I was just you know I'm glad that he finally you know trusted us. We're like, hey man, just share, it. just tell us the truth. If if we think it's you know too insane, you know it's a podcast. It's not live. We <laughs> right. can make adjustments. But um, Anyway, I, I was a great conversation. I was glad we got him over here. I was, you know, interested in his own career as a cup on, uh, cup crew chief and so forth, and good to hear some of those stories and, and his frustrations over some things that happened in his career and, the you know, how he learned how to get those cars to go really fast at Daytona and Talladega and so forth. The rate, you know, he ends up going there and winning in, 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 uh, uh, with John Andretti in Cale Yarborough's car, you know, in a car that nobody thought was a front-running car. But he could find ways to make it go fast. And yeah. um, I really felt like he is an innovator. I think we oh, use he's the word, one of the we use innovator almost yeah. as tongue in cheek about talking about a cheater. But like yeah. I, I, I got well, the sense less that he insult- was really innovative. Well, it's a less insulting way. I mean, you don't want to sit across from a guy like that and go, "Tell me how you cheated, man. Tell me how the things you did to cheat." You're gonna, you know, you you say innovator because you won't, you don't want to insult them, yeah, and you want them to tell you the story, and you know it's. So much time has passed. Let you know. I hope I love. I hope these guys, you know, understand that it doesn't mean any. It doesn't mean anything. It's not a knock against their, you know, I, that's a compliment. I'll, yeah, it's a compliment. So at least here it is for him. Yeah, it is in this room. You're going to be appreciated for, you know, sharing some of the ways that you were creative and saw holes in the rule book or found ways to get a car through tech and and th- you know pass the prying eyes of 
you know, NASCAR yeah. officials. The break, the breakaway jack bolts, um, you know, In good heavens. Incredible. What a genius. Yeah. Hey, if you like that video, like and comment below. And don't forget to subscribe so you'll never miss another piece of Dirty Mo Media content.